Hello everybody and welcome back to World of Warships Legends where today, courtesy of Quirky Park, we are going to be taking a look at the Tier 4 battleship USS Texas. Now before we move on to stats and gameplay we will take a look at our commander. I am using William Sims, he is currently maxed out at 16-4. For our inspirations we are using Andrew Cunningham and Agilene Scharnhorst just for the extra bonus to dispersion and our shell grouping. If you do not have Sean Horst, I would recommend running either Robert Georgiard or Nikolai von Essen, both AP focused commanders. Now for our actual skills, we are using Flammable Cannoneer, Gyrating Drill Bits, Marksmanship, Reaching Out XXL and Will to Rebuild. You can run Emergency Specialist, but due to the unique American Damage Kong with its long duration, I choose not to do so. For our upgrades, we only have one slot as this is a tier 4 premium. I have chosen to use main battery mod 2 for the main battery to reverse speed boost. However, you can run AA guns mod 2 just for the extra AA firing range. For the ship's actual statistics, we have 50,700 hit points. Bear in mind this is affected by William Sims' base trait, which gives you extra hit points for your ship tier. We have 31% torpedo damage reduction, which is better than the average for most battleships of this tier. We have 16.5km of main gun range and an agonisingly long 34.3 second reload. We have a main battery 180 degree turn time of 35.3 seconds. Our HE shells do 5000 damage and have a 30% chance of setting fire. Please bear in mind you should rarely if ever be firing HG in this ship and only at destroyers. With a citadel hit, our AP shells do 11,330 damage. Our secondaries have 4km of range and a 7 second reload. They do 1800 damage with a citadel which will never happen and have a 6% fire setting chances. Please do not build the ship for secondaries, they absolutely suck. Moving on to our AA defences, this ship is absolutely formidable in this category. However, please remember this ship is equipped with absolutely no long range AA suite and even your longest range AA guns only reach out to 3.5 kilometers. In terms of maneuverability, this ship moves at an absolutely anemic 18.5 knots. We have a very good 600 meter turning circle and a 14.7 second rudder shift time. All of which added together makes Texas a surprisingly maneuverable battleship. Our surface detection range is 13 km and 15 km whilst on fire. You are detected by aircraft from 10.9 km and 18 km when you fire your main guns, 13.9 when you are on fire. Your detectability whilst firing from smoke is 11.8 km and as always your guaranteed detectability range is 2 km. With that being said we move on to the armour. As with all tier 4 battleships, Texas is equipped with a 19mm bow, this is overmatched by 11 inch guns and larger if I'm not mistaken. So quite literally every battleship you will meet can punch directly through your bow. Your torpedo protection does give you an added 25mm and this means you can bounce 40 inch shells and lower when angling. Under that you have a 280mm main armour belt. Your turrets have 356mm frontal plating and 220mm side plating. Now the majority of your upper belt is also 19mm, bear this in mind as this makes it a very good shell catcher. Your citadel is, as with most US battleships, slightly above the water. This means you can be citadeled at just about every single range imaginable. Now one flaw with the Texas's armour scheme is that there is a small gap at the front of the casemate armour protection, where any shell that goes through the 19mm deck at the bow can go straight into the citadel with plunging fire. This will happen the more you play Texas, and this is how it happens, this is to be expected. With all of this out of the way, we will now move on to the actual gameplay. Now I have two games to demonstrate the Texas today. The first one takes place on the map Ring, this is a capture of a base game mode, there is a carrier in the game. There is in addition one destroyer on each team. Now we have spawned on the left flank with an allied Congo and the allied aircraft carrier. We have the allied destroyer in the middle of the map, however due to the way spawns work here he is likely to go to the left flank where we are. I have decided to point my bow right at the start of the game. This is so I can angle to the centre of the map and I can get all my guns around on the left flank. 
Our allied Congo is now here passing me to the left. He's going to presumably try and flank northwards. I get spotted here very early on. I automatically assume it's the enemy destroyer. However, it will not be. Enemy Nevada turns up here and he immediately starts slowing down after he fires at the Allied Congo. I line up my shot here, waiting for him to slow down so I can get the best results. He notices me and begins to turn in hard to port. We get a relatively decent chunk here, 4,000 damage for two pens. Not too shabby, however I was hoping for something better. Enemy Giasano over there, who proves that it was actually him who was spotting me and not to be enemy destroyer, proving that the enemy destroyer is probably not on this flank. This is of course very good news, I'm very slow and don't want to be torpedoed. We get spotted here by the uh, enemy aircraft carrier from pretty much across the rest of the map. We take another shot at the Nevada after our guns reload, wait for our results. 6k we get two pens through the bow he shoots back i turn in he bounces now our allied turbine or however you say it has come over to this flank in order to assist we notice the Giasano has actually circled back round here i'm going to turn to starboard in order to get all of my guns on display so i can shoot him unfortunately i did not notice his change in speed. He has slowed down and somewhat turned out. Our shells fall short and too far forwards. We get a single overpen for our work. I believe that Nevada may have just been shooting us out of destroyer there or the Congo, but I can't really tell. Uh, oh, an allied action call has also turned up over here. I've, at least I think that's an action call. Seeing this, I have decided that there are already enough allied ships on this flank so I decided to push towards the center in order to assist the right flank who currently is outnumbered by the enemy. I use the gun lock to lock my guns right and surprisingly get a citadel from that previous salvo on the enemy Nevada likely through the same bow deck weakness that the Texas has as well. Our allied Turbine has shot torpedoes at the enemy at Nevada, and surprisingly the enemy destroyer is actually on this side of the map, though he's in a position where he is relatively useless to his team and can't really do a lot. We see the broadside enemy Piotr Veliki, however I quickly realised that we are not going to be able to get a shot on him due to the island in the way. I know I can't lob this and I immediately switch my attention. We took a look at the enemy Iran there but there is a more advertising target. There is an enemy Omaha and it's natural habitat as we all know Omaha's are like to get citadel. However someone absolutely demolishes him before I get the opportunity to which means I don't get the dev strike I was hoping for yet do still manage to pick up the citadel and secure the kill. That allied cruiser in front of me is on very low health and is probably not going to last much longer that. Allied Königsberg has fired torpedoes at the enemy Veliki, so I was considering a shot on him, however I realise he is probably going to eat those and so don't bother. At this point I'm in a bit of a difficult situation. There is only the enemy Orion to shoot at presently and there's no island on my left side, which means I can't get my guns around right now. How there is a broadside enemy Karlsruhe reversing out into the open over here. We decide to take the shot with all of our guns, however I do not anticipate that he has accelerated very quickly and all my shells unfortunately land too far behind him. I I'm already in a process of picking my next target here. I am looking to shoot the broadside Cesare, however he has just disappeared. And I don't necessarily want to waste a full salvo on killing a low health cruiser, so I just hope that somebody else will kill him. Especially when the enemy carrier turns up. I voluntarily beach myself here and by turning a left to get all of my guns around in order to, well, shoot him. 
because I want this carrier gone. If the carrier is dead, we get a massive advantage. We get spotting and they really don't. We take the shot here and unfortunately for overpens. As the Langley is or was actually an old merchant vessel, it's very, very lightly armoured and you can't expect citadels on it a lot. The enemy destroyer has finally gone down of the Allied Congo, finishing him off. This, um, fortunately, we have lost our destroyer in the process. I can't remember exactly how that happened, but it did. And our enemy Arkansas dies, which means, unfortunately, we do also lose spotting on that carrier. We get a salvo here from the enemy Giulio Cesare, who's actually bizarrely firing high explosive. I'm not sure what's caused him to do that, but he sets a fire on us as this is only one fire. I do not put it out, that's a general rule, you don't put out single fires for any exper inexperienced players out there. Annoyingly we are still spotted by the enemy carrier so he can likely still hit us from over the island, that and the enemy Orion who was also with him. Unfortunately, our enemy Koenig has just gone down. This leaves us as the only ship that can have shots on the right side of the map and is likely going to make us a target for the enemy battleships and the carrier. We take a shot here at the Giulio Cesare, however, unfortunately, he turns in and slows down. Those shots go high and too far forwards. He sets us on fire twice with a another HE salvo, which means we are now on fire three times so I decided to put that one out as it's not worth keeping it burning. Enemy carrier coming in here. We're going to keep us spotted no matter whether we fire our guns or not and we are also inside our sea detection range of the enemy Orion. I get ready to take a shot at the Julio Cesare however he disappears just as I was about to fire leading me to just simply shoot the island in front of him. Enemy gear silent, getting dev struck by the Allied Agent Corvus takes the enemy down to just the Julio, Orion, and Langley left on their team. Enemy carrier once again circling overhead. We get another armor piercing snail from the Orion, who hits our thinner 19mm casemate armor belt. Julio also taking a shot at us, but just like me, shoots the island. And I get a very juicy looking broadside Orion here. Take the full salvo, dispersion is looking good and that is a very nice, about 13,000 damage there with 6 pens. Now our team is capping the enemy base, they're about halfway through at this point, however that Dugway is on particularly low health and looks like he's going to die very shortly. Enemy Orion comes in here with an HE salvo, lands 2 shells and sets me on fire with both of them. Luckily, my damage control is off cooldown at this point, so I decide to use it. We're now down to only 14,000 health here, but I'm still willing to take risks in order to try and get these enemy battleships out of the game. The enemy carrier has been spotted, however, he is hiding behind the island at the other side over there, 15 kilometers away. Problem solved, sir. Enemy carrier here striking our Duguay, unfortunately he takes him out. This resets our capture progress and also there is now only one ship in the cap. Which means that it's going to be capping slower than with two ships. Take a look around to see that Agent Core still pretty much max health, however unfortunately as it is an Agent Core, he does not have any AA defence, quite literally zero. He has no AA guns whatsoever on his ship. We are almost nearing the corner of the island now. I've already prepared my shot at the enemy Orion. Enemy Julio appears to be either on fire or flooding here. Not looking good for him. And our allied carrier is striking them both. However, they are most likely putting up a fairly formidable AA defence.
Allied carrier lands a torpedo hit on the enemy Orion. I decide to try and finish him. Enemy carrier, meanwhile, bombs us and sets us on fire again. Fortunately, our rear turret didn't did yarns, but that is just not enough in order to kill the Orion. Fortunately, my impatience seems to have gotten the better of me. Enemy Julio, meanwhile, gets smacked by somebody else, and unfortunately for him, the Hoshe finishes him with a flooding. I turn left to get the rest of my guns around in order to be and also to begin the push towards the enemy carrier. I fire my salvo, I already know that's dead Orion, and immediately turn my focus elsewhere. Now, I initially load high explosive here, as I know from a close range encounter with the Langley, I am most likely not going to citadel it at all. So, I load high explosive to try and maximise my amount of damage. That's when I notice the enemy torpedo bombers incoming here. We turn hard to starboard in order to try and dodge the torpedoes, which are inevitably going to come. Here we go, the enemy carrier begins his attack run. And unfortunately for him, that attack run wasn't very good. And without even needing to dodge, I dodge. I turn back into port here so I don't beach myself on the island. Unfortunately, this means that the carrier now has a completely flat broadside battleship in order to torpedo. I already know I'm going to eat both of those and try to take it on the belt. Unfortunately, a flood, which is exactly not what I wanted. He already has his next squadron in the air here. Dive bombers this time. Unfortunately, thanks to the efforts of the enemy Julio and the enemy Orion, they have destroyed much of my anti-aircraft suite already, and I haven't got much left to defend myself with. Bombs coming in here, 6k, and that's a fire. Now, I believe at this point this is just already going to be enough to kill me. The enemy carrier turns up here, but of course we can't get a shot. Dive bombers circling background now. That's another pen for 2,000 damage. I know this is... My fate has already been sealed and tried desperately to get a salvo off on the enemy Langley. However, my efforts are going to be in vain as he begins to reverse in typical carrier player fashion. Dive bombers come in here to deliver the killing blow. I thank the enemy carrier for his gameplay and unfortunately that's us done. Moving on to game two here, we have a up tier on the map Haven. There are two destroyers on the enemy team, the Fubuki and the Avieri. We have no carrier this time, which means I don't have to worry about being cross-fired at will. Just like last time, we turn our ship to the right in order to head south. And turn our guns left in order to get all of them round. Our destroyer or destroyers, as they both have spawned here, as they are in a division, are also heading south as well, and I do not want to be here by myself. We have two cruisers and a battleship up north, however one of the cruisers also seems to be heading southwards. This would put us at a considerable disadvantage in the north side of the map, as we only have a cruiser and one battleship to hold off the rest of the enemy team. There is the Duke of the Alster, got spotted there. Unfortunately, not in my main gun range just yet. There is also an enemy battleship over there. I believe it's a Tennessee? I could be wrong. Someone, presumably already one of our cruisers, opening fire there. And the enemy aviary gets spotted, surprisingly. Now I decide to just take a semi-auto aim pot shot at him, not expecting much, and I do not damage him. 
Our cruiser here being incredibly ballsy, he's charging directly into the middle of the map. Obviously not a very good strategy, he is just travelling in a straight line and he gets torpedoed. That's first blood to the enemy team and we've lost one of our most powerful ships two minutes into the game. And I was wrong, it's a Doria, not, an, uh, not a Tennessee. We were going to take a shot here, however the island does get in our way. Somewhat. Ray guns cleared. Wait for our results on that salvo. Three pens, fairly decent, 7k damage. Uh, enemy Nuremberg is heading up north, which means on they only have three ships at this side of the map. Our two destroyers, meanwhile, have encountered an enemy destroyer in the middle of the map. It's the enemy Fubuki. And I'm watching in semi-amazement as our destroyer eats one of the Fubuki torpedoes and then proceeds to get the gun down by the Fubuki, I expect. Yeah, there he goes. However, he does manage to finish off the Fubuki with a torpedo. Moving southwards here, our Fuso is giving a lot of broadside to the enemy Doria, he's turning it now. But the enemy Aviary is probably going to torpedo him if he continues to push. Enemy Doria though coming around this island here in a questionable positioning choice. I prepare my shells myself for the shot of a lifetime here. And that enemy Nuremberg that was heading north has actually turned in and is like our Nuremberg driving straight up the middle of the map, however he's not going to be punished this time. We aim the shot just below his front turrets here. And our superior pen angles come into play. That is a good 20,000 damage. That takes Vidoria down to pretty much a one shot. However, he is actually now healing. We do have an ally, though, who is shooting at him as well. So hopefully we'll be able to finish him with our next salvo. He fires here, but doesn't actually fire at me. Instead, he fires at the cruiser behind me. I do not know what he did to the destroyer, but he did definitely not kill him. Enemy Emerald turns up here. We're going to take that shot every day. That looks like one of dead Emerald to me. Yep, there he goes. Victoria's secondary is coming into play here. We could angle out in order to try and bounce enemy shells and his secondaries. I'm going to try and aim here for the superstructure shot. And manage to finish him off with that salvo. At some point, however, our Fuso on this side of the map has unfortunately died. This leaves just me and the Allied cruiser, as the cruiser that was behind me has unfortunately also died. Interestingly, that enemy Nuremberg looks like it has beached itself to the island to my left. I'm not sure what he's doing. We might get a shot here on the aviary. We take the shot. Don't apply quite enough lead, but still get a very nice 5.6k damage. That takes him below half health. Now I decided to push here, which may have been a poor decision in hindsight, however I do have very much most of my health still intact. And I decided it is worth the risk. Alster kills our Devonshire, this leaves just me on this flank. I 
It may sound bizarre, I'm actually hoping here for the enemy destroyer to try and YOLO rush me, so I can hopefully finish him off before he fires his torpedoes. Now that enemy Nuremberg is yet to spot me and yet to be spotted, so I think there is a good chance he is still just beaching himself on that island, so I turn my guns left, partially expecting him to still be there, whilst also turning right so I don't beach myself on the island in front of me. Spotted by the plane from the enemy Alster, I believe. It's clear to me now that I'm not going to get shots on this Nuremberg, so I turn my ship. And there is the enemy aviary. He is only one and a half kilometers away from me. Smoking for some reason. He's in my RGA range, so that isn't going to help him. Torpedoes to port. I take the shot, I kill him, but unfortunately he gets all of his torpedoes away. But because of the fairly poor damage output of these Italian torpedoes, I survive and put my heal to heal myself back up above 11,000 health. I use my one spare turret here on the oust, this version looks good, and I manage to take him out. Enemy Nuremberg has now appeared off my starboard side, heading towards our base. I'm not sure how he managed to get there. We get a nice 13k damage chunk on the enemy Congo. I put myself into a kiting position, try and make myself as small a target as possible, and so I can also hopefully balance him off my 25mm torpedo bulkhead. I'm hesitant to use my one turret here, I prefer to fire all of my guns in one salvo. Enemy Congo fires. I fire back, I'm on 2000 health at this point, I get a fairly meh 4000 damage salvo, those shells did not go where I wanted them to go. Pick up my high calibre in the process. Right now I am hoping that the enemy Nuremberg dies, so obviously he doesn't cap our base, however his survival doesn't seem very likely, it's currently fighting the rest of my team all at the same time. I get another heal here, I use it. Congo hits us again for a single overpen. Despite my luck this game, I'll admit it, very much lucky, I am Still thinking that this is probably not going to last much longer for me. I get 6,000 damage on the Congo there. I position myself directly stern on. Turn a bit, try to throw off his aim. He does hit us with one shell, unfortunately. However, it only did 2,000 due to damage saturation. Unfortunately, jumping ahead a bit here due to the Xbox capture system. We can only record 10 minutes at a time. However, that Congo Salvo did not appear to do a significant amount of damage. However, ours does. 15,000 damage. That makes this small engagement here between me and the Congo actually winnable. He gets another overpen, I believe, there for 1,600. We are barely hanging on here. We get, we get a magical ricochet there, I believe, off of our 25mm torpedo protection. That could have very well saved my life. We get another heal coming back here in a minute. He goes directly bow in, curiously, so I aim for the overmatch shot to punch through his bow. Unfortunately, only 2,000 damage out of it. Meanwhile, the enemy battleship all the way up north has actually been spotted and looks to be now getting torpedoed by the Allied Destroyer. I realise at this point, even if the Congo does kill me, the win is still securable. If not, already won. Get another overmatch shot on the Congo there. We get a very nice hit and we manage to take out one of his turrets. He takes us down again, 
That's probably about the fifth time I've been down to 2,000 health so far this game. And I think it's around this point I realised that, oh my god, I've actually won this engagement with the Congo. He's now giving me flat broadside, which is not a good idea. He gets a shot off, but he aims too high. It looked like that was going to kill me, and that is the Kraken. Now, as we are on the other side of the map, this game will not last too much longer. And we are not going to do any more any more damage. That is a 134,000 damage game in the Tier 4 USS Texas with a Dev Strike, a High Caliber, a Kraken, and a Dreadnought to go along with it. We also managed to get 2,688 base XP for a Tier 4 battle, which is impressive if I do say myself. We make 331,000 credits. With this being said, I do hope you have enjoyed this video and to like and subscribe if you did. If you have not bought the USS Texas already, I do actually highly suggest it. It's in the store for a fairly cheap price compared to other tier 4 ships. Only £8 if you are British, I'm sure it's probably about the same amount in dollars as well. You also get 10 promotion orders and 7 days of premium. I once again, highly suggest Texas if you haven't already. You, it's a very good ship for beginners. You get punished for making bad decisions and you get rewarded for making good ones. Overall, a very balanced ship and a very good one. I will see you all in the next video and goodbye.